Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. In this video, I will show you how to use our robust scripting capability to prepare data for use with ClickSense Desktop. There is no question that data preparation is a key process of most BI solutions. Let's face it, the data is not always going to be in a form suitable for reporting or visualization. So it must be transformed and augmented in order to provide meaningful and accurate results. Granted, if you have access to a governed data repository, data that has already been processed, cataloged, and curated, it's most likely ready to be used immediately, and your report creation will be a lot easier. In this case, the work to prepare the data has already been done for you. Though, in some situations, you may find yourself with no choice but to use spreadsheets or files. Maybe you don't even have access to the source data. What if the data you do have access to is not suitable for reporting? For example, commonly data is sent to business analysts in the form of Excel reports, pivot tables, and nested cross tabs. How do you get it into a form that ClickSense can use, keeping the valid bits and ignoring the garbage? You can use many other tools, coded programs, and possibly other methods to pivot or create a straight table from this data. But is all of that really necessary when you can do it very easily in a click sense and with a few lines of our powerful scripting language along with our data wizards? Allow me to demonstrate this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take this Excel sheet, which is in the format of a report, uh, which could be considered a cross tab. Uh, as you see here, we have our title information, which has valuable information that we can use uh, within our data visualizations. We have our sales metrics for these particular items, apples, bananas, and oranges, and a couple of attributes such as state and order date. Uh, then we also have an aggregated column of data for quantity sold, showing the total number of items that were sold for the states and on those dates. And then you'll also notice we have a tab that has uh, the same similar data structure, uh, but showing sales for the northern region. For this video, we're going to focus just on the southern region. So we'll go over to ClickSense, and I have already created a new app, and we'll go into that app. Now data has not been loaded into the app. I'm going to show you that process. Uh, in the app, I did create some visualizations as shells. So when we load the data, you can see the representation I'm speaking of. So you'll see that in a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to use quick data load or the drag and drop capability. So I'm just going to switch over to the folder where that Excel spreadsheet is. And I'm going to drop that right into our data load panel. And ClickSense will interpret the data. You can see here's that additional tab. And here is our header rows and columns and here's that additional information. So all we simply have to do here is increase the header size by the number of lines to get to this header row here. So that's gonna be four. So I just increment these up to four, and you can see now we have our header rows. I'm going to deselect quantity sold because we're gonna use that a little bit later in the next part of this video. Right now we're just gonna focus on our attribute of state and order date, as well as the metrics or measures for apples, bananas, and oranges. That's all we need to do here. So we're going to load that data. Okay. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out, uh, if I go back to the Excel sheet and scroll down, you can see that we also have another column for total. So that total value is actually in our state column. So we have to remove that. So going back into ClickSense, we're going to go into our data load editor. And we're going to access the section of the tab that contains the script that was inserted by the data wizard. And you can see these columns have been entered here. So what I'm going to do here is right at the end, I'm just going to take out the um, total value. So I'm just going to say where state not equal to total, and then put a semicolon here. Now you could also possibly use the filters keyword that is part of this from statement, but that's beyond uh, the scope of this particular video right now. Okay, so that's going to eliminate the total value from the state column. Now, we also want to now pivot this data. So think of this as uh, pivoting the data or creating a straight table or denormalizing the data to be used with ClickSense. So we're going to use the cross table function or what they call prefix. And you can see the IntelliSense pops up that uh, prefix value. 
and then it takes a few arguments. Now, if you want to research this a little bit further, um, you could go to our help and you could look at the cross table prefix. It takes an attribute field name and a data field name and then an optional uh, qualifier, which you will see me use in a few seconds. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put in the uh, attribute that we want to use. In that case, it's going to be item. Okay, we want the new field name to be created called item that's going to contain the values apples, bananas, and oranges. And then the next field that we want to put in here is the data field, the field that is going to display uh, the measures, in this case our sales metrics, so we're going to use sales. Then we must um, denote the qualifier. So by default, the qualifier is 1. So we could close this off and just use state as our qualifier. In other words, the value that will be repeated within the data for state for the apples, bananas, and orange sales. But you'll notice we also have order date here. So we just need to move this up because this is not part of our sales data. This is actually another qualifier. So for each state and for each order date, there is an apple, banana, and orange sale. So we move that order date up and we just remove this comma here and then we increase our qualifier comma 2 and that's what we need to do basically to flatten that data if you will so at this point let's just save and click load data and then let's go over to our visualization okay and as I said earlier I already created the visualizations as empty shells so when the data is loaded we can quickly see it and now you can see our items our states as dimensions, as well as the straight table with all of our data. So you might want to say, okay, well, Mike, let's check this to make sure the values are correct. I don't trust this. And one of the most important things of any type of data transformation or data preparation is making sure the data will give you accurate results. So what I'm going to do is let's say I want to look at R in sales for Florida, which is appropriate. And we have sales in November and sales in August. And you can see the values here, 2,579 and 794. So let's go over to our Excel spreadsheet. Let's perform some data filtering. And let's do the same thing for the state of Florida. And here you can see we have oranges. And you can see here on November, $794. And then in August, we have 2,562 and $17.61. And if we go back to ClickSense, obviously if you add 2,562 plus $17, we'll get 2,579. Okay, so these are the August 27th sales that you see here for the state of Florida. So at this point, I can say I am comfortable that the uh, values that I've uh, flattened or pivoted are giving me the accurate results because they also have the same values that came from the source. Okay, so within the next video, I'm going to show you how to add some additional dimensions um, to this data. And then I'm also going to show you how to bring in the aggregated column and then also optimize um, the data load to make sure you have the most efficient application possible. See you at the next video.